One of the all-time top 50 selling albums got its title from a real-life incident where the album's creator was denied access into a restaurant because he was improperly dressed. A breakdown of the inspired tracks and the angry episode that led to the making of a masterpiece next on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you know what a 45, an 8 track, a cassette, a 12 incher, and a CD is, you're going to love this channel. Subscribe below right now and make sure to click the bell so that you never miss out on our daily features, the best of the rock era. Also check out our Patreon link below. It's our insider community where we're going to be adding a lot more exclusive videos. Now, uh, we all have those albums that were released in that magical period of our lives where we were just discovering the, the mystery and the miracle of music. For me, the years of about 82 to 87 uh, were that wondrous time for me. One album uh, that stands out as one of the pinnacles of my childhood and that I've heard at least 100 times all the way through is No Jacket Required by the great Phil Collins. A uh, little history on Phil going solo. As you probably know, he took a break from Genesis to release his debut face value in 81, an emotional juggernaut, that one, uh, songs that he wrote during the painful breakup with his first wife. It was a big success, selling over 5 million copies in the U.S. and 1.5 in the U.K. Moment, then he released Hello, I Must Be Going in 82, another multi-platinum affair which contained his first top 10 hit, You Can't Hurry Love. Then he was nominated after that for a slew of awards for his heart-wrenching ballad Against All Odds from the movie of the same name. Uh, he was nominated for an Oscar and a Golden Globe for Best Original Song. He lost both of those, but he did win a Grammy for Best Male Pop Vocal Performance. Right after that, Phil dropped his third album, No Jacket Required. It would uh, blast him into the stratosphere putting the likes of Madonna and Michael Jackson, Prince, and many more on notice. Phil was at the top of the charts for a long time. The album debuted at number one in the UK, and it would later spend uh, seven weeks at number one of the Billboard Top 200, selling 12 million copies in America alone, making No Jacket require one of the top 50 selling albums of all time. Phil Collins chose the title No Jacket Required after a real-life incident at the Pump Room restaurant in uh, Chicago. He'd entered the restaurant with former Led Zeppelin vocalist Robert Plant, and the maitre d' would not let Phil into the dining area because he didn't meet the dress code. In fact, Phil was actually wearing a jacket, but apparently the jacket wasn't good enough. Now, they did let Robert Plant in, even though they were similarly dressed, uh, but Phil was on the outside looking in. Uh, Phil was understandably more than a little miffed, and uh, he was certainly a little bit embarrassed. And after a heated exchange, Phil left the restaurant and uh, seething with anger, and that was that. Um, interestingly enough, in an interview with Playboy magazine, Phil said that uh, he was never so mad in his life. The management of the restaurant apparently became aware of the episode, and they later sent Phil a complimentary sports coat and an apology letter stating that uh, he could come into the restaurant whenever he wanted, wearing whatever he wanted. Uh, although the title was spawned from an unfortunate happening, No Jacket Required is a just a rapturous, momentous ovation. It's an album that is just filled with artistic vision, uh, superior musicianship, and melodic exuberance. Let's dig into the songs uh, that made this album, No Jacket Required, such an amazing, uh, life-changing record. Now, as we go into this album breakdown, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I rock every day here on Professor of Rock. When you design your custom frames at zenny.com, you can uh, actually add blocks to them, uh, like I have on all of mine. Now, blocks by Zenny, uh, they protect your eyes from harmful UV and blue light that we, we all come into contact with every day. Go to zenny.com and you can get yours, and you can actually do a try-on and see how you look before you buy. Now, the first cut on the album is Sue Studio. It was the first single from No Jacket Required in the UK, rising all the way to number 12. 
and it was the second single in the US. It shot all the way to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Sue Studio is a one listen smash. As a nine year old, I instantly loved it, but I'm sure you're like me and millions of others who, uh, when they first heard the song, they were wondering, what the heck is Sue Studio? Phil Collins shared that the improvised lyric, it was improvised, he was just playing around with the drum machine, and the lyric Sue Sue Studio came out of his mouth for no apparent reason. Bill did try to find a substitute, I guess, to replace Susudio, but he couldn't find another expression that scanned as well as Susudio, so he went back to that word. Consequently, Phil's made up word Susudio became a part of the pop culture vernacular. It's a nonsense word that creates an immediate blast of joy. As the lyric goes, I feel so good if I just say the word. The music and the feeling of the song was actually inspired by Princess It in 1999. The synthesizer rhythm, synth bass arrangement, sound design, and programming for Sue Studio was actually executed by David Frank of the R&B synth pop duo The System, who had seven top 40 hits on the R&B charts in the 80s and a number four crossover hit with Don't Disturb This Groove in 87, one of my favorites from that time. The horn arrangement for Sue Studio was built around the motif of the bass line and performed by Don Myrick, Louis Satterfield, Michael Harris, and uh, Ram Lee Michael Davis, the foursome that made up the famed Phoenix horns that energized all those great earth, wind, and fire tracks in the 1970s. And it's a big reason why this album is so joyous because of those horns. Phil keeps the tempo hot on side one with the second track called Only You Know and I Know. A jazzy dance track dominated by the brass of the Phoenix Horns again and the funky guitar wrist from Daryl Strumer. Uh, I totally remember playing this on my boom box while we were jumping on the trampoline in the backyard, all me and my, me and my friends, and we were playing Karate Kid and showing off our pro wrestling moves, pretending like we were Hulk Hogan or Rowdy Roddy Piper. Man, those were the days. Track three on side one is Long, Long Way to Go, a haunting pontification and the most political song that Phil wrote at that point and included for No Jacket Required. While I sit here trying to move you any way I can, someone's son lies dead in a gutter somewhere and it would seem that we've got a long, long way to go. Very heavy stuff, but I can't take it anymore. So it would seem we just still got a long, long way. It's definitely uh, one of Phil's most breathtaking songs. I remember just being awestruck when I saw how they used it in the season two finale of uh, Miami Vice. It was then that I understood the, the true power of a great visual of great music. Turn it off if you want to. Another little fact uh, that most people may not know, Sting provided background vocals on Long, Long Way to Go. Now, next up on side one of No Jacket Required is the driving rocker, I Don't Wanna Know, showcasing the talents of guitarist Daryl Strumer. This is one of several tracks from the record that I think could have been top 10 singles. I mean, it's got such a powerful chorus with Phil's signature punch in the face, knockout vocal. He's such an underrated singer. No, 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 no. The final track on side one is One More Night, the lead single in America from No Jacket Required, taking just uh, seven weeks to become Phil's second number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and the adult contemporary chart as well, while it vaulted to number four in the UK and topped the Canadian singles chart. remained number one in the Billboard Hot 100 for two weeks before making way for the superstar-laden collaboration of We Are The World. One More Night and Against All Odds were the first two uh, number one pop hits for Phil Collins. And uh, those tracks firmly established Phil Collins as an exceptional balladeer, capable of creating songs with just lush romance and with 
heart-wrenching anguish. Let you know how I feel. Collins was just playing around with his drum machine, a Roland TR-808, when he started singing the chorus of the song. He uh, later recalled that the writing of the song, which has no hook, was completed very quickly. So I can make you see. I Believe One More Night was a very instinctive song for Phil to write. Uh, no wonder that he just rolled with the flow. It just sounds like that. Uh, one More Night is composed and performed with just an intense yearning and empathic anxiety webbed in a fragile love that could be lost if you make the wrong move. I mean, we could all relate to the, the nervousness that you experience in a young relationship uh, when you have strong feelings for someone and you struggle with how to find that balance between letting them know how you feel and not blowing it by appearing desperate. Phil nailed that, that angst in verse two when he says, I've been sitting here so long, wasting time, just staring at the phone. And I was wondering, should I call you? Then I thought, maybe you're not alone. Maybe you're not alone. I definitely identify with the burning desire heard in the chorus. You know, please give me one more night. Give me just one more night. One more night, because I can't wait forever. Even though with Phil's heart-wrenching and just pleading vocal, you feel like he will wait forever, really especially in the way that he flows into that, that beautiful bridge. Like a river to the sea, I will always be with you. And if you sail away, I will follow you. And if you sail away, I will follow you. Legendary producer Arif Mardin composed a string arrangement for One More Night, and the great Don Myrick does the honors for the, the amorous saxophone solo that highlights the outro. <laughs> Side two of No Jacket Required, a blast off with the third single from the Magnetic Record, Don't Lose My Number. It's like a cousin to Steely Dan's Ricky Don't Lose That Number. It's the story of a friend named Billy who was on the run from a, a crime he didn't commit. Nobody knew where to find him. No evidence was found. I'm never coming back. They heard him cry and I believe him. I love that. The narrator can't find him either, but he is hoping that Billy kept his number and will contact him so he can help his friend. Uh, Collins revealed that Don't Lose My Number was purely based around improvisation and that Billy is a fictitious character. Uh, Phil actually began to write this track Back in 1980, when he was developing songs for face value, he claims that the lyrics were completely improvised and the song has no real meaning to speak of. Daryl Sturmer and uh, Leland Sklar, these guys really shine and don't lose my number. They just drive the song's palpitating beat. As a kid, I used to rewind this part and re-listen to it over and over again. Phil played drums and keyboards on the track. Uh, Don't Lose My Number was co-produced by Phil and his longtime collaborator, Hugh Padgham, who co-produced most of the tracks on No Jacket Required. Brilliant producer. Uh, the song rose to number four on the Billboard Hot 100 and was a top 10 in Australia and number 11 in Canada. Curiously, Don't Lose My Number was not put out as a single in the UK. I don't really get that one. Now, the second track on side two of No Jacket Required is Who Said I Would? This song is uh, it's about a guy who's in love with a woman that is only using him for what she needs and uh, then leaves him. She fills me full of loving, well, then she sets me free. But she's got a heart must be made of stone because when I tell her that when she'll miss me when I'm gone. Who said I would? Who said I would? Who said I would is uh, it's another up-tempo track led by the magic of the Phoenix Horns including a sax solo by Don Myrick. It also features a percussive kalimba keyboard layer played by Phil himself, another sound that uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, of course, brought to popular music. Now, track number three on side two is Doesn't Anybody Stay Together. together? Co-written by Phil Collins and Daryl Sturmer, uh, the standout component of Doesn't Anybody Stay Together 
is uh, it's gotta be Phil's drumming, which alternates back and forth in personality from vigorous to benign. This song was written as it seemed to feel that uh, everybody around him, his friends, his managers, bandmates, even he himself were all getting divorced. Phil remembers the irony of playing this at Prince Charles' birthday party when just a few years later, Charles and Di would uh, divorce. Does anybody stay together anymore? The ninth track on No Jacket Required and the fourth cut on side two is Inside Out. Ah, just an infectious and beloved depth track that Phil penned about the frustrations of an emotionally twisted love affair. Kicked off with a big Phil Collins drum kick and his fat chorus vocal, Inside Out, Ooh, You Got Me Inside Out. This one definitely should have been a single. It's maybe my personal favorite from the album overall. You can definitely feel an, an intense bitterness and a hostile and frustration from, from Phil Collins' inspired vocal. And then he turns right around with a lovely, soulful vocal in the bridge. It's just juxtaposed amazingly when he comes right back with a nasty uppercut in that last verse where he says, all of my life I've been searching and hanging on, turning a corner, never know what I'd find. But now I'm back again like I never went away. Who let me in, I'm through with a waste of my time. No Jacket Required was such an immensely popular album. Rock Radio had to find some way for the format to embrace this record, and they found it with Inside Out. The track's bold production and Sturmer's tasty guitar solo just gave this song a rock bluster. It stacked up well against the top AOR songs of that day by ZZ Top, Foreigner, Dire Straits, and even Bruce Springsteen. Although it wasn't released as a single, Inside Out did break the top 10 on the hot rock mainstream chart. And number nine, the highest charting song on the rock chart from No Jacket Required. Now the last track on the original version of Phil Collins' No Jacket Required is Take Me Home. It's one of his best solo offerings to me. Take Me Home is another song uh, which the meaning was originally vague. At first listen, it appears that the song is about uh, longing to return home. Yes, that's not true. Phil Collins has stated that the lyrics refer to a patient in a mental institution and that the song is very much based on the, the 1962 Ken Kesey novel, One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, the novel, of course, later adapted to a stirring film of the same name, 1975, starring Jack Nicholson. I myself don't hear it, but to each their own. Take Me Home is a star-studded recording that boasts the talents of Peter Gabriel, Helen Terry, and Sting, who all provide backing vocals. Now remember, uh, Helen Terry's powerful supporting vocal, remember that on Culture Club's Church of the Poison Mine? That's her. Take Me Home reached number 19 in the UK, number seven on the Billboard Hot 100, and number two on the Adult Contemporary chart. Uh, Collins enlisted the coveted session player Leland Sklar, whose bass licks set the vital foundation for the song's unconventional melodic structure, along with Chester Thompson's punctuating beats from various rolling drum machines. Now in 2003, the group Bone Thugs and Harmony heavily sampled the song in their single titled Home. Bone Thugs and Harmony contacted Phil personally. Uh, they asked him permission to sample Take Me Home and they invited him to actually appear in the music video for the song. Now, uh, I guess at first Phil declined mainly because the hip hop group is in America and Phil was in Geneva but the band really wanted Phil to give his blessing to the song. They wanted him to be involved in the project, so they flew to Geneva. Phil was so taken with their, their passion and their respect that he agreed to the use of the hook for Take Me Home and to appear in their video. Home by Bone Thugs and Harmony actually equaled the peak position of Take Me Home in the UK. It climbed all the way to number 19. In the TV series, Mr. Robot, 
The song had prime placement in an episode where the lead character had suffered from blackouts. Because I don't remember refrain from Take Me Home, uh, it's just perfect for the theme of that episode. Every time I hear this, uh, Take Me Home, I'm taken back to a Saturday afternoon. I remember my mom was gone and it was just me and my dad and he was grilling gizzards on the barbecue uh, while this song played in the background. I didn't care for the gizzard, uh, but my dad talked me into trying it anyway. We had just a great time listening to No, no Jack Required. It's an album that my dad and I both had. That's why this album was so massive, I think. It was because parents and kids loved it and they could listen to it together. In the CD version of No Jacket Required, the track We Said Hello Goodbye was added as the final song. Originally, it was the B-side to Take Me Home and Don't Lose My Number, and a different version appeared on the soundtrack to the movie Playing For Keeps. I myself am partial to the orchestral version where the beginning portion of the song was composed by the late Arif Mardin. Uh, Collins has shared that the song is unfairly classed as a second-class citizen, offering that the song would have been looked at differently if it were added to the album. And we packed our bags and lived, feeling sad. Funny enough, uh, this is uh, one of my favorite tracks of Phil's rich repertoire, uh, whether solo or with Genesis. Again, the Arif Mardin uh, opening is just mind-blowing. And Phil's interpretation of the lyrics is just exceptional. The song is about change. It's always difficult, very uncomfortable, but it gets better as you assimilate. I remember listening to this song the night before I left home for good after graduating from high school, uh, knowing that I was saying goodbye to a period of my life that I would never experience again physically. My fears were truncated though when Phil assured me that with a new roof over my head, with a smile, it's the only way. We all know that you, you can't go home again, but that's why I love Phil Collins, no jacket required. It's such a touchstone of my, my wondrous youth that it can get you closer than anything that I've ever encountered. Gave you smile, it's the only way. Leave us a comment about this, this beautiful, catchy album of wondering. What are your memories of it? What are your favorite Phil tracks? Uh, if you like our content, we do invite you to be a permanent part of our community. To get this album on vinyl, click on our links below and make sure to look us up on Patreon. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.